A woman shot and killed in her own driveway after being confronted by an angry mom. It was all caught on surveillance video. The victim, a mother of five herself, died at the scene. The suspect allegedly mad that the woman had driven one of her children to school without her permission. Now the victim's family says a plea deal for the shooter is only adding to their grief. Vanessa Murphy from our Las Vegas affiliate sat down with the victim's father, who calls the deal an injustice. This is Jamie with her oldest. Gary Chase says being a mom to her five kids was everything to his daughter, Jamie. They have very fond memories of her. This is when the 32-year-old mom's life was cut short. My daughter was unarmed. All she had was her words. This is Jamie Chase showing up to a Las Vegas home after she learned her ex's roommate, LaHala Kaiway Brewer, drove her 11-year-old son to school that morning without her permission. The women exchange words, then Jamie walks away. Highway Brewer's dogs get in Jamie's SUV. More words are exchanged. And then... <laughs> Highway Brewer shoots Jamie in the head by her left temple. According to Jamie's boyfriend, Kaiway Brewer won't immediately drop the gun and he has to knock it out of her hand. She panics, says she can't find her phone, then looks for her dogs while Jamie lays bleeding on the ground. Hey, my girl just shot in the head. She eventually calls 911. I shot her. Along with the neighbor. I just saw somebody get shot in the head. And the boyfriend. He tries CPR, but chaos continues when police arrive. Straight ahead. Highway Brewer is arrested on a murder charge. She tells detectives she felt there was no other option to stay safe but to shoot Jamie. Then Jamie's dad gets that fateful call. He said that um, there was a shooting and my daughter was, was killed and she's gone. I'm sorry. Pretty much all I remember him saying. And I said, you better not be messing with me. No, this is not a, a funny joke at all. He later breaks the news to Jamie's five children. The youngest, just four years old. The oldest, 13. We just told them that their mom was gone. And she, she passed away. A lot of crying, a lot of disbelief. A lot of hurt. He and his wife immediately take their grandkids in at their Pahrump home. While trying to grieve, he learns the murder charge is dropped. Kaiway Brewer pleads guilty to voluntary manslaughter with use of a deadly weapon. She knew what she was doing. She knew where the gun was. She picked it up. She knew it was loaded. She stopped to cock it. Kaiway Brewer is scheduled to be sentenced in September. She faces two to 20 years in prison. Sorry and a slap on the wrist. Have a nice life. Gary Chase also blames poor communication from the Clark County District Attorney's Office. District Attorney Steve Wolfson tells me he believes his office was in constant contact with Gary Chase. A prosecutor indicated she was inclined to offer the plea deal, but Gary Chase was informed it was official after it already happened. Wolfson also tells me his prosecutors believe that plea deal is the best way to ensure a conviction in this case. This isn't trying. This is laying down, letting me get kicked again. And while he seeks justice for his daughter, he continues to focus on his grandkids. They, um, some, some, sometimes they wake up crying at night, calling her for her for her. They, they know she's right there. She helps guide us very much so. The kids go out and Look at the sky, talk to her all the time. Vanessa Murphy, News Nation, Las Vegas. Well, right now, the military is refusing to say how 17 people have died this year at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City. A base spokesperson says some of the cases are still under investigation, but according to military.com, some are suicides, others are reportedly due to COVID 19. More than 30,000 government employees, contractors, and civilians work on that base. So we will continue to keep you updated.
The man accused of killing four University of Idaho students is due back in court tomorrow. It's a hearing which could alter the entire defense strategy for Brian Koberger. There's a motion to compel prosecutors to share certain evidence and to stay the trial. So far, we know some of the evidence includes DNA found on a knife sheath left at the crime scene, which allegedly is linked to Koberger. The defense claims he was driving alone at the time of the murders and that the grand jury process to indict him was unfair. So this trial is set for October. Let's bring in News Nation legal contributor Jesse Weber. Jesse, thanks for being with us. Before we dig into the specifics of these two motions, just how important will the judge's decisions here be? It's everything. It determines what this trial will look like and when this trial is ultimately going to happen. So I can't stress it enough. There's been a lot of important moments during the course of this case, but tomorrow could dictate what we're actually going to see, what the potential defense can be, and when this trial is actually going to take off. Call me cynical. I just don't imagine an October trial date unless the defense does a 180 and says they're ready to go. I just can't imagine everything at stake, death penalty, uh, death penalty case, so much evidence that this is going to happen in under two months. I just don't see it. All right. Exactly. Because, I mean, here we are already past mid-August. So let's say a stay is granted. How long yep. uh, could that be in place? So that leads us to the big issue about what the evidence is going to be. Because one of the big issues that this is focused on tomorrow is, does the defense have a right to the prosecution's evidence regarding genetic genealogy. And when I say that, I mean all of the communications between lab personnel and these databases, whether or not other profiles would, were developed of potentially other suspects. Because if the defense gets everything that they want, a full spectrum of how prosecutors, excuse me, how investigators use genetic genealogy to track to Brian Koberger, that could ultimately delay the trial. There is a lot to sort through. They're going to probably hire their own experts to strike at that evidence. And I, I don't think it's crazy to suggest that this trial could be pushed out into 2024 mm -hmm. if that becomes a battle of what we're seeing. All right, so Jesse, so help us understand that. So why is this yep. information that the defense doesn't already have? Because I thought that both sides had to share what they have. Is that, is that not the case? That is the case. It's discovery. Both sides have to share. Well, the prosecution has to share with the, pro the defense what they have. The prosecution, the way I understand it, has been a little selective in this. They said the defense doesn't have a right to know the methodology by, with, by which they use genetic genealogy, by which in investigators use genetic genealogy. It also would compromise certain methods that they used, and if other profiles were developed of other, maybe not suspects, just other people, that could invade on the privacy rights of these other individuals. Should the defense have a right to say, hey, you know, we saw that you developed the profiles for John Smith and Mary and Mary Kay and all these different people, should the defense have a right to do that? And I think that's a valid argument for the prosecution. Having said that, we're talking about arguably the most important piece of evidence in the case, DNA linking the defendant to the crime. I do wonder if the judge is going to try to split the baby a little bit and say, maybe the defense has a right to certain information, not everything that they're asking for, but certain information in order to mount a defense, because that is, in my opinion, the critical piece of evidence in this case. All right, so the DNA seems to be the critical piece of evidence right now when it comes to the case against Koberger. But on the flip side of this, I mean, is the defense maneuvering in a way that makes sense right now in your opinion? They're throwing a lot of different interesting legal theories because we can't also forget what tomorrow is too. They're saying there's been a whole problem with the grand jury. And this trial needs to be delayed so they can investigate how the grand jury came back with an indictment. What was it, about a month ago? We were talking about how they were questioning, did the grand jury, were they instructed wrong on how to actually come up with an indictment? Well, now the defense is saying there were problems in the grand jury selection process. You had grand jurors uh, who didn't fill out the, the forms the correct way. There was improper questions or commentary happening during the grand jury process. And so the defense is saying, we have a right to investigate this. Prosecution is saying this is a waste of time. They're saying even if a grand juror made a clerical mistake on a form, that's not enough to actually change the grand jury outcome. Um, and so it's going to be up to the judge to determine should the defense get a little bit more time to strike at the validity of the grand jury indictment. That in of itself could delay the trial um, as well. And so it's been very interesting to see the defense 
strike at the grand jury indictment. Usually that doesn't happen. So I'm curious to see if it works. Jesse, I always love speaking to you. You break it down in a way I think we can all understand. So thank you. I hope so. I hope so. You definitely <laughs> thanks, do. Thanks, thanks Jesse. Appreciate it. Well, up next, Lady Gaga's father joins News Nation to address a problem he says is creating chaos across New York City. And police expected to give an update at the top of the hour involving this woman, missing mother of five, who was found dead on a popular Maryland hiking trail as the search intensifies for her killer. Moving forward with node positive breast cancer is overwhelming, but I never just found my way, I made it and did all I could to prevent recurrence. Fresenio reduces the risk of recurrence of HR positive, HER2 negative, node positive early breast cancer with a high chance of returning as determined by your doctor when added to hormone therapy. Hormone therapy works outside the cell while Fresenio works inside to help stop the growth of cancer cells. Diarrhea is common, may be severe or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an anti-diarrheal and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. I'm making my own way forward. Ask your doctor about everyday Verzenio. My mental health was much better, but I struggled with uncontrollable movements called TD, tardive dyskinesia. TD can be caused by some mental health meds. And it's unlikely to improve without treatment. I felt like my movements were in the spotlight. Ingreza is a prescription medicine to treat adults with TD movements. Ingreza is different. It's the simple, once-daily treatment proven to reduce TD that's number one prescribed. People taking Ingreza can stay on their current dose of most mental health meds. Ingreza 80 milligram is proven to reduce TD movements in 7 out of 10 people. Don't take Ingreza if you're allergic to any of its ingredients. Ingreza may cause serious side effects, including sleepiness. Don't drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Ingreza affects you. Other serious side effects include potential heart rhythm problems and abnormal movements. It's nice. People focus more on me. Ask your doctor about number one prescribed once daily in Greza. Learn how you could pay as little as zero dollars at ingreza.com. Ingreza. We need some help. I know. I'm going to cashnetusa.com. And if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. Go to cashnetusa.com to apply for the money you need. My active psoriatic arthritis can make me feel like I'm losing my rhythm. With Sky Rizzy to treat my skin and joints, I'm getting into my groove. Along with significantly clearer skin, Sky Rizzy helps me move with less joint pain, stiffness, swelling, and fatigue. And is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Sky Rizzy attaches to and reduces a source of excess inflammation that can lead to skin and joint symptoms. With Sky Rizzy, 90% clearer skin and less joint pain are possible. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing like clearer skin and better movement. And that means everything. Now's the time to ask your doctor about Sky Rizzi. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Tonight on News Nation, who would you tell if you shot your wife? Well, one judge messaged his office, said he wouldn't be in the next day, then confessed to the crime. Now he's fighting the charges. Tonight on Banfield, only on News Nation. And now to a new milestone in the migrant crisis. New York has officially taken more than 100,000 migrants since last April. And News Nation spoke with a New York restaurant owner who also happens to be pop star Lady Gaga's father. He says the migrant crisis is creating chaos in New York City. What's happened is, is that 500 uh, migrants have been dropped in the neighborhood and just uh, four or five houses from my condominium and uh, like three blocks from the restaurant, all right? And, you know, store owners and um, and the residents in the immediate and surrounding areas have have been affected by 
you know, the, the chaos that's um, precipitated. You know, it's always been an extremely quiet place and an attractive location, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And now what's happening is from 10 o'clock at night until 4 in the morning, it's become a party zone. Um, in the mornings, you know, we see quite a number of ambulances and, and fire trucks. In fact, as of yesterday, yesterday we, there, there was a fire in the Stratford Arms where the migrants are staying. And um, they haven't been, you know, well um, taken care of. Well, Mayor Eric Adams says the crisis could cost New York City $12 billion by just the middle of next year if there are no policy changes nor additional help from the government. Well, Vanished, a Los Angeles songwriter now missing for two months, her friends and family begging for help. Camille Layerth Segura has written hit songs for artists like Katy Perry. And just days after telling friends she was starting a new project, they stopped hearing from her. Samantha Cortese from our Los Angeles station breaks down everything we know about this case. It's been seven weeks since anyone has heard from Camela Laird Segura. I called another friend, said, have you spoken to Camela? Who called another friend and we all realized that nobody had spoken to her in quite some time. Does she look familiar to you? Friends and family in LA and Sweden are worried something sinister happened to the 48 year old singer and songwriter. Drift away. Just here. Friend Cecilia Foss says Camilla had been evicted from this Beverly Hills apartment for not paying rent, a result of losing work during the pandemic. Her 19 year old cat Morris is also missing. Now, due to what happened with the landlord, I think she was upset and she probably maybe even went for a drive and just to clear her mind or something. However, as time went by, we were all increasingly more concerned. And at this point, you know, I think something happened. Foss tells us Camella's 2010 Ford Fusion was last seen near Robbins Drive in Beverly Hills around 2.30 a.m. June 30th. Since then, her silence is uncharacteristic. The last time I saw her, she was in really good spirits. We had tea, we were just hanging out. She was talking about like writing a movie and she asked if I actually wanted to be in it and she was just like super excited about the future. Laird's most well-known credit is co-writing Walking on Air for Katy Perry in 2013. <laughs> You know, share her photos on social media as much as you can. We just want to bring her home safely. That was Samantha Cortese reporting. Up next, a medical milestone, the pig to human kidney transplant that could eventually save lives. And brand new report involves cancer rates across America, who's more at risk than ever before and who may not have to worry as much. A doctor will join me live with what you need to know. News Nation has a trust rating higher than CNN, Fox, and MSNBC. You can only be the most trusted name in news with the most trusted names in news. Another reason why News Nation is news for all America. Make this the summer you started here and ended up all the way up here. The summer you gathered with a few friends and later a few hundred more. Found the perfect place to dive in and an even better way to dry off. Make this the summer of Jeep. Introducing employee pricing on all 2023 Jeep Gladiator models. Purchase and get 6,453 below MSRP on the 2023 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. At Consumer Cellular, you get the same exact coverage as the largest carriers for up to half the price. That's a... Barbara? Sorry, I was muted. Barbara! That's amazing. I know, right? Ugh. Attention firefighters, first responders, military base personnel, and airport workers. Listen closely to this important legal announcement. Have you been exposed to chemical-based firefighting foam? If so, you may be entitled to a substantial cash award without going to court. For decades, aqueous film forming foam, or AFFF, has been used to extinguish liquid fuel fires. A scientific study has now shown that the chemicals used to make AFFF are highly toxic to humans and can cause a significant risk of developing several types of cancer. 
cancer, including kidney, pancreatic, thyroid, prostate, bladder, testicular, liver, or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. If you or a loved one are a firefighter, first responder, airport worker, or member of the military that has used firefighting foam and has been diagnosed with cancer, please call the Negligence Network to file your claim today. There's no fee unless we win your case. Call the Negligence Network to see if you're eligible for substantial compensation. Call 1-800-500-1636. That's 1-800-500-1636. You didn't live this strong, this long, to get put on the shelf like a porcelain doll. If you have postmenopausal osteoporosis and are at high risk for fracture, you can build new bone with Avenity. Ask your doctor if you can do more than just slowing down bone loss with Avenity. Want stronger bones? Then build new bone. Ivenity can help in just 12 months. Ivenity is proven to reduce spine fracture risk by 73%. Ivenity can increase risk of heart attack, stroke, or death from a cardiovascular problem. Do not take Ivenity if you have low blood calcium or are allergic to it. Serious allergic reactions and low blood calcium have occurred. Tell your doctor about jawbone problems as they have been reported with Ivenity or about pain in your hip, groin, or thigh, as unusual thigh bone fractures have occurred. Don't let a break put you on a shelf. Talk to your doctor about building new bone with Avenity. The Omaha Steaks Anniversary Sale is here. For over a century, we've guaranteed the highest quality in everything we offer. To celebrate, we're offering you 50% off site-wide. That means you'll save 50% and get our 100% guarantee that you'll love every bite. Never tried Omaha Steaks? Save an extra $30 with promo code FIRSTTIME. Visit omahasteaks.com slash TV today. I had eight UTIs in one year. This inspired me and my partner Spencer to launch Eucora. Eucora makes effective urinary tract health products. It truly works miracles. The peace of mind I've been looking for. Go to Eucora.com to learn more. Can you believe this? Doug Flutie and Frank Thomas. You guys look great. Once I turn 40, let me guess, less energy, less drive? Definitely. It's not your fault. It happens to every man. Testosterone levels drop as you age. It happened to you guys? <laughs> yeah. So what did you do? We, we got, got Eugenics, Eugenics Total, Total Tea. Tea. This unique man-boosting formula is powered by Testofen, a patented key ingredient clinically researched to help increase testosterone levels. Nugenics is the number one doctor-recommended testosterone booster in the USA, number one at GNC, and number one at Walmart. But you can only get your complimentary bottle by Texting room to 42424. That does it. I gotta get Nugenics. Just send a text. Yeah, for a complimentary bottle. And by the way, she'll like it too. Get your complimentary bottle of Nugenics now. Text room to 42424. Text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenics Thermo X, our newest, most powerful fat incinerator ever, with key ingredients to help you lose fat and get lean absolutely free. That's room to 42424. A possible change in the future of those waiting for organ transplants. And it comes after surgeons in New York successfully transplanted a pig's kidney into a human. The first of its kind operation took place last month. And so far, the kidney's function looks good. News Nation's Brooke Schaefer has been following this story. So, Brooke, what do we know about the recipient in this? Yeah, he's a 57-year-old man. He's currently brain dead. But his family donated his body to researchers in New York for this medical procedure that is being described as a possible game changer when we are talking about organ transplants. Surgeons in New York transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a human body. And they say for the last month, it's been working normally. Again, the man who got that pig's kidney is brain dead. His name is Maurice Miller, but his family agreed to donate his body for the experiment, allowing doctors to keep him breathing on a ventilator in order to get this pig kidney transplant. Doctors in, at NYU in New York say that even though the patient is brain dead, this is significant because this is the longest a pig kidney has functioned in a human. News Nation's Kelly Beeson spoke with one of the surgeons involved in this transplant earlier today on News Nation Live. Uh, the process has been unbelievably exciting. Uh, every day we've really been coming in and seeing this kidney function just as a normal kid human kidney would in a patient. And really what we're seeing is 
function that would be no different uh, if uh, we took a lab test from you or I right now and that the fun function of the kidney is working fantastic. And it's not just that hospital in New York. Researchers at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, also reported this week they have had success implanting a pair of pig kidneys in a donated body for seven days. In the past, teams at NYU and the University of Alabama, Birmingham, had tested this pig kidney transplant in donated bodies, but they'd only lasted or tested them, rather, for just two or three days. So the fact that this is still working more than a month later is really significant here. Doctors and researchers across the U.S. are hailing this as a critical step and a possible life-saving solution for the more than 100,000 people currently waiting for transplants in the U.S. right now. Many of them, unfortunately, die before they can get the organ they need to survive. Nicole? Yeah, this uh, could truly be a game changer. All right, Brooke, thank you. And the doctor who helped perform that groundbreaking surgery will join Chris Cuomo live tonight at 8 Eastern. That's right here on News Nation. All right, sticking with health news. And there's some good and bad news when it comes to cancer. According to a new study of more than half a million people, young women are more at risk than ever before. Americans under the age of 50 saw an increase in cancer rates, with the largest increase being women in their 30s. So the study points to obesity and processed foods as some of the main drivers behind this increase. But there is also some good news here. Cancer rates in patients aged 50 and older decreased between 2010 and 2019. All right, let's bring in Dr. Jane Morgan, the Executive Director of Health and Community Education at Piedmont Health. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. First, before we get into really the specifics, what is your biggest takeaway from these news, new numbers? Because as we said, there's this bad news, but on the flip side, flip side there's some good news for people over 50. You know, Nicole, that's absolutely correct, and thank you for having me. We do see that cancer rates overall are decreasing for our population, but we have this demographic of younger people where we see cancer rates increasing. They seem to be correlating with this 20-year increase in obesity as well in this demographic. It seems to be paralleling the increase in cancer rates as well. All right, so I want to dig into some of these numbers a little bit more here. So overall, the increase in cancer rates for those under 50 was only 1%. So it was just a slight increase. But within that 1%, there was a nearly 20% increase in people in their 30s. We talked about women in their 30s there. Again, we said that increased drinking, obesity, processed foods, some of the reasons. But doctor, my question is, aren't we seeing these underlying factors in all age groups? So why is it potentially affecting this particular group differently. And so we have something called the toxicity of obesity, and it seems to be correlated with the duration of time that the body spends in an obese or overweight state. It used to be in previous generations when people gained weight, they were in their fifth and sixth decade of life. Now we see people often from childhood who have obesity, and by the time they are in their 30s and 40s, they've had three, four, and five decades of ongoing obesity. We haven't had that type of demographic nor that type of data before. And so the duration of the time that your body remains in this obese state seems to be critically important as well as hormonal balance that occurs during that time. Oh, that's so interesting. Because yeah, that, I would be interested to see when we really started to see that uptick uh, in childhood obesity and, and whether or not then it coincides with these new numbers. That, that definitely makes sense. Uh, doctor, before we let you go, we certainly can't hear it enough, but what are the easiest ways we can try to reduce our risk of any cancer? You know, absolutely. We want to adopt healthy lifestyles, and that means exercising more, trying to eat uh, less processed foods, whole foods, but also trying to maintain a, a weight that is decreased. The other thing that we are doing as a medical community is we're looking at our guidelines and whether or not we need to begin screening for cancer at an earlier age, because often the screening begins at an age beyond 39 years of age when these cancers are developing. And then by the time we catch them, they're more advanced as well in this younger demographic. 
All right, Dr. Jane Morgan, we certainly appreciate your expertise. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.